Hello everybody, welcome back to American Textbook Reading. My name is Brian Stewart, and in this lesson we're looking at Social Science Book 4, Lesson 8, The End of Slavery. In this unit, or in this lesson, you will discover how American slavery was ended and who some African American heroes are. So, let's get started. Our first word for this lesson is slavery. Slavery is the condition of being a slave. What is a slave? We'll see that that's a word coming up soon. Next we have plantation. A plantation is a large farm where people grow crops. And plantations were usually in the southern part of America where the temperature, the climate was very warm and it was good for growing many different types of crops, especially cotton. So a plantation is like a very big farm. Next we have slave. As I, as I said, we have that word coming up. We saw slavery before as the condition of being a slave, but what is a slave? A slave is a person who is owned by another person and works for that person without payment. Unfortunately, for thousands of years, human beings have treated other human beings as slaves. And we can see this in many historical periods and in many parts of the world. Uh, and that's basically slavery. When you own another person, usually people would fight wars and the losers, you know, if they weren't killed, they were taken as slaves and forced to work for no money. Now a servant is someone who works in another person's home. And usually when we think of servants, servants are paid for their work. For example, a housemaid or a butler. Usually, of course, these days, obviously, uh, servants are paid for their work. So there are still servants around today. And of course, servants have been around again for thousands of years as well. But usually servants would receive money or uh, some kind of compensation for working in usually a rich person's house. Escape. Escape means to get away from something, to run away from something, to leave a situation that is dangerous or unpleasant. Maybe you want to escape from your homework. Yeah, but homeworks it's important to do your homework, so don't escape. <laughs> okay, do your homework, and then you can escape and have fun with your friends. Okay, good, so that's escape. Civil War. Now, many countries have had many different wars. The Civil War is a war in America that occurred between 1861 to 1865, and it was a war between the southern states and the northern states of America. As you know, we talked about in a previous lesson, America has many different states. And in the northern part of America and the southern part of America, there are many states. Now, a civil war, it doesn't matter what country. You know, other countries have also had civil wars. It's when one part of the country uh, decides they don't want to be part of the bigger country. They want to break away and make their own country. And so we call that situation a civil war when fighting breaks out over that issue. That would be a civil war. Okay, and in this case, when, we, when Americans talk about the civil war, they're talking about the war between southern states and northern states. Okay. Cotton. I mentioned this before when I talked about plantations. Cotton is a kind of plant that produces white soft hairs used to make clothes. So obviously this is a very important crop or plant. And this is the white cotton ball, right? Uh, I don't know if you're probably too young to know this, but people used to use, they still do use cotton uh, balls sometimes for medicine, right? If you have a, a, a wound, a, a scar, your mom might take a cotton ball, cotton ball, put it in some alcohol or some disinfectant and brush your hand with it to help disinfect your cut. 
but cotton was also pulled apart and used to make thread in clothes. And this, of course, was very important in making clothes, which is a very important industry in the 1800s and is still an important industry today. So it was a very important crop and it was usually grown in the southern states. Why? Again, because they had a lot of wide open land and the climate was very warm, good for growing plants. Okay. Sugarcane. Sugarcane was also another and still is a very important crop. Of course, it's a kind of plant that produces sweet crystal-like material used for cooking. Sweet crystal-like material used for cooking. That's sugar. <laughs> okay. So when you want to put a little bit of sugar, right, on your, uh, on your cereal, well, don't put sugar on your cereal. Your cereal already has too much sugar. But anyways, uh, many foods, they put sugar into it and they get sugar from sugar cane. Did you know that? These uh, plants, they look like bamboo, don't they? But uh, they can dry them. They can process these plants and make sugar out of these plants. So again, sugar was another very important crop like cotton that is grown in southern states and also in many uh, small islands in the Caribbean. Okay, those are our words for this lesson. Now, one of the main ideas of this unit, of course, is the end of slavery. And we're talking about slavery in America, uh, which unfortunately slavery, like I said, slavery was practiced for thousands of years in many countries around the world. Unfortunately, in America was one of the last uh, countries to get rid of slavery uh, in the 1860s. So how did this happen? What was the timeline of slavery in America and when did it end? Well, a long time ago, uh, Africans were taken from their homes and sold as slaves in some parts of America, usually the southern states. Because why in the southern states? Because like I said, there were many plantations um, and the farmers there grew cotton. They also grew sugar cane. Uh, also again, in many Caribbean nations like Haiti and Costa Rica and in Cuba, they had these very large fields where they grew cotton and sugar cane and they needed cheap labor. They needed people to work in these uh, farms. And of course, Africa, it, from Africa, there was a slave trade. And so many slaves were shipped over to the Americas during the uh, 1600s, 1700s, uh, and of course, in the 1800s. Uh, to work on these farms. And it was a horrible, terrible thing that happened, but that's what happened. Now, when slaves came to the New World, which was what America and uh, that area was called, slaves worked as laborers in the fields. So they worked as laborers in the fields or as house servants. A laborer is just somebody who works, works hard, and they do very physical jobs like digging or raking or picking uh, crops. In the fields, it's very hot. It's terrible, dirty, uh, and very difficult, physically demanding work. Or as house servants, working in the house, uh, serving the, the masters of the plantation, the rich people who owned the farms or the plantations. So, slavery was one of the reasons for the war called the Civil War. Slavery was one of the reasons. There were other economical, economic reasons as well. Um, slavery and also some uh, issues of independence that the southern states had disagreements with the north and there were some tensions. But slavery was one of the main issues for the Civil War. The south wanted to keep, the southern states wanted to keep slavery as an institution. Many northern states didn't have slavery. Uh, they didn't need it. They were manufacturing. They had factories. They didn't have farms. Uh, they didn't need that uh, um, uh, many people working in the fields in the North. So the North didn't really have slavery. And in fact, slavery was outlawed. It was not allowed. It was not permitted, but it was allowed in the South. And this was a major source of tension between the Northern states and the Southern states. And of course, these tensions, one of, one of the main tensions, these tensions became very large and the South decided we're leaving the, the, the United States of America. We're going to make our own country. 
The southern states lost the war and they, were, they stayed inside uh, the United States. And after the war, President Abraham Lincoln ended slavery after, after the North won the war. And uh, President Abraham Lincoln signed a, a, a bill or a law. It was called the Emancipation Proclamation. Emancipation Proclamation, and it was basically a decree or a statement that nobody can own another person. Slavery was outlawed throughout America, and that was the Emancipation Proclamation. Okay, there are some African American heroes that we can talk about. Harriet Tubman is one of them. She was a slave, so she lived uh, back in the 1800s, and she escaped to freedom. So she was in the South. She was a slave in the South. She escaped to the North where slaves were free. There were no slaves. And uh, there was, you know, slavery was not allowed. So she escaped to the North to her freedom. And she didn't just rest and uh, carry on her life and enjoy, you know, being a, a free person. She felt a responsibility and obligation to help the other people like her that that she had left when she escaped to the north. So she was very brave. She didn't have to do this, but she volunteered to help hundreds of other slaves escape. She is remembered for her courage. And in fact, she's very famous for helping with the what, what's called the Underground Railroad. It wasn't actually underground. People sometimes say something is underground when it's hidden from sight or it's illegal. They don't see it. And so it's kind of hidden. The Underground Railroad. It wasn't a railroad that went under the ground. No, it, but it was hidden from sight so that the authorities, the law enforcement in the South, couldn't see them, couldn't find them. But it was a railroad because it helped many people go from South to the North, uh, slaves to escape to their freedom in the North. And she was very important for this movement. Now, even though slavery ended, Hundred, a hundred years later, there were still problems in America, especially with race, and they still continue to this day, of course. There's another famous person, Jackie Robinson, who in the 1950s, he became the first African-American player in Major League Baseball, Major League Baseball, the MLB, and he played for the Dodgers, as you can see on his uniform. So although slavery was ended, there was no more slavery, in the 1950s, African-Americans were not treated equally. They were, there was discrimination, right? So they were not treated as an equal person. Now, Jackie Robinson became very famous because he was the first African-American player to be accepted by the Dodgers. You may know the Dodgers as a very famous American baseball team. And you think, oh, the LA Dodgers. Yes, they're in Los Angeles now, but they used to be in New York. Sometimes teams will change cities because people will buy the team and move it to another city. But in the 1950s, the Dodgers were in New York and uh, they hired or they recruited Jackie Robinson to play for the team. Now, there's a really good movie that I recommend to you. It's called 42 and it's a recent movie. And uh, it's, it tells a story about Jackie Robinson. It really shows the discrimination and the controversy of this story. It's a very good movie, so if you have time, check it out. Okay, so anyway, let's move on. Let's do the reading. Now, as usual, I will read out loud. You guys repeat after me or repeat in your minds. Let's focus on the words from the vocabulary. Not all people in the early United States were free. In some parts of America, people taken from Africa had to work in slavery. Workers on plantations worked long, hard days as slaves. Slaves had to pick cotton in the fields or raise crops like sugarcane. Other slaves worked in the homes of slave owners as servants. The life of a slave was hard and many slaves tried to escape to freedom in the North. Unlike the southern states of America, the northern states did not support slavery. President Abraham Lincoln 
decided that slavery should end. The southern states challenged the president's decision. As a result, the northern and southern states fought the long and terrible civil war over the issue of slavery. In the end, the North won and the slaves were set free. Okay, let's take a look at how this reading passage was organized. And here we have sequence. Sequence is like an order of events. What happens first, what happens next, and then what happens in the end. And this reading passage is kind of organized along the lines. Because we're talking about slavery. What was the beginning of slavery? What were the effects? And how did it end? And that's what these three boxes will tell us. So, first of all, we have people taken from Africa had to work in, what word from the vocabulary can we use here? Had to work in what? Now, you don't say in plantations, you could say in plantations, but on plantations would be the preposition. They had to work on plantations, so you have to work on farms. But in this case, we're talking about a condition. What condition was from the vocabulary? The condition was slavery slavery. So we use in when we describe a condition in which someone has to work. They had to work in slavery. They had to work in bondage. They had to work uh, in some sort of condition. But if you're talking about where they worked, if you're talking about farms or ranches or plantations, we use on. They worked on farms. They worked on ranches. They worked on plantations. And that's what we have next. Slaves had to work on plantations. I just said it. Plantations. Or in homes as what? Do you remember? People who work in the homes of uh, slave owners or rich people? Servants. Servants. So, whoop, there, make my T there. Okay. Or in homes as servants. The life of a slave was hard, and many slaves, of course, tried to beep to freedom, right? They tried to run away. What's another word for run away? Escape. Escape. Escape to freedom. President Lincoln decided to end slavery. Okay, so the first box tells us the condition, uh, you know, uh, where people came from. The middle box kind of describes what the situation was after so many years. And the last box will talk about the end of slavery. So the northern and southern states fought a war called, what was the war called between the south and the north? It was called the Civil War. The Civil War. Now here I'd like to point out that you need to use the because it's a war. When we talk about wars we and we say what kind of war it is, we say the war because unfortunately there are many wars in the world. So when we describe a particular or unique war, we name it and we have to use the because we're saying which war. It's a war. Which war? The Civil War. It's a revolution. Which revolution? the French Revolution. So when we talk about events like this, of course there are many type, similar type events, and we name it, use the. Okay, so the Civil War, the French Revolution, the War of 1812, so we need to use the. Okay, the North won and slaves were set free. Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation. Okay, so uh, in this lesson, we took a look at the end of slavery. It was a terrible period for American history. It's a shameful uh, period for American history. should have never happened, but it did, and that's history. And there's a lot of things that, uh, that we can see in history where we hope and we, we have to work so that they never happen again. We should not forget them. Okay, so anyway, I hope that you learned a lot in the vocabulary for this lesson, and it was kind of an interesting look into the past, into the history. Okay, thanks for studying with me, as always, and we'll see you again in the next lesson. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.